Thank you and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to people. And that's the sort of world that we live in. We live in, a, uh, we live in a world where it is possible for people living in such widely varying time zones to come on a virtual conference and share our insights on innovation. And that's the brilliant world that we live in today. And my topic is basically around that. And so let me share the presentation that I have. I want to begin by saying that innovation today is not the same that it was some three, four decades ago. We are living in very, very different times. In three to four decades before, Innovation would have meant that you were discovered, you had developed a new product and launched a new product. Today, innovation is very different. So many of the innovators have never developed a product on their own. They are just using technologies of various people, building ideas and solving problems that others couldn't solve. And that's the topic that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about today uh, helping people actually solve problems and innovate in the common, uh, in a new world. I do consulting for a for a living. I work with organizations on helping them grow and uh, uh, grow the business using innovation as a predominant tool. The, the topic that I'm going to talk about today is actually something called crowdsourcing of ideas. If you look at the single difference between companies three decades ago and today, you will notice is the way they approach innovation. No longer are organizations focused on developing everything in a closed environment, a closed R&D environment in utter secrecy. Today, it is about collaborating with people, collaborating with your suppliers, collaborating with your, with your competitors even, and collaborating with your customers in creating new ideas and creating in innovation. And this is what we call as open innovation. Central to this idea is the capability of organizations to solve problems. I call them this is about learning and insight. An organization which is innovative actually has tremendous capability to learn new things. And that comes from doing problem solving, doing experimentation. They find solutions to problems which nobody else is doing. This entire thing is what we call as ideation and is central to innovation. However, ideation on its own never drives or never results in the innovation. For an organization to succeed and create innovation, they require two other things. They require direction. They need to provide answers for why should you do something, what should you be doing, and how you do. Combine it with le learning and insights, with experimentation, and combine it with execution, you probably have a very good chance of innovating. You still are not sure that you're going to be innovative. You have a very good chance of innovating if you can combine all of these elements about setting direction, about learning, and about executing. And that is the key to innovation. And how could we enable this process is the thing that I, I would like to spend the next 10 minutes about. You know, in most organization, the way people go about innovation is somebody in the organization says, my idea is the best. And if the guy is right at the top of the organization, is a powerful person, you execute it, you launch the idea and then pray for the best. You know, you might succeed or you might not succeed. You might not have innovation. Um, big organizations have made a virtue of a process. What they have done is they have created a funnel, a tyranny of process, I call them. And that tyranny comes from the financial world, truly. 
they want certainty about doing things so you have lots of ideas and then there is a tyrant who sits there and then says oh these ideas can't go forward because it doesn't make sense to me and you are talking from a current sense evaluating ideas which are very futuristic you can't use the current knowledge to actually decide if ideas are good enough or not and so what you have is an inefficient process of idea generation and innovation the current thinking says that you need a non linear process what you don't need is reduction in number of ideas actually you need more ideas you need to keep on expanding and creating more and more ideas you need to cluster them you need to test ideas you need to carry out lots of experiments and maybe out of these experiments you will find some brilliant solutions brilliant concepts which can then become innovation so what i personally preach to my clients is that if you want innovation you need a process you need a process of discovery you need a process of generating plenty of ideas you need a process for selecting the best ideas you need a process for developing the right concept and you need a process for commercialization i've been lucky to work with a brilliant organization called innovation 360 who have developed a solution called ideation 360 which helps part of this process and that's what i'm going to share share with the audience today about how we enable organizations to successfully ideate and result in innovation this is a saas platform where thousands of people can ideate on same challenge simultaneously we have run this with very large set of audience engaged thousands of people in doing online ideation people can use a web app or an app on a mobile phone to generate ideas contribute ideas whenever they want they don't need to be in the office or they don't need to be in a workshop to do that you can keep the ideation open for any number of time every idea is visible to all contributors they can all like comment and build on existing submissions we use artificial intelligence to cluster ideas and generate and we find the unexpected things the system also provides feedback so everyone knows what is happening to their ideas they are, the system also engages with people so that we generate more and more ideas finally we have facilitators who are the experts who generate hypotheses run experiments and evaluate every idea every idea is evaluated no idea is rejected the system is capable of running online ideation and hackathons and we use it over 4 to 6 week period to generate tremendous number of ideas what do we do in this the uh, in the use for generating these ideas the first thing we start with defining why does a company need innovation it always starts by if people don't know why they should be doing something you will never make progress so you need to identify why you need innovation what are the strategic needs and then identify key problems that the organization can solve for their customers these are then broken down further into questions that employees can answer we call them the how can we questions we break it down into saying how can we do something that is the challenge people can address that is the one for which we ask people to generate ideas on once you have done that we create a web landing page we circulate it to lots of people you can send it to people outside the company you can send it to your customers you can send it to universities you can send it to your suppliers for everyone to contribute ideas and here's what it gets this interesting now once you open it up it's visible to everyone once an idea comes in others can see it they can build on that idea find a new idea 
build around it. They can actually refine that idea. They can provide feedback to the person. And so he can refine it further. And so the, this way you can actually explode. So you start with three, four ideas and in no time it explodes into a massive library of ideas because everyone is actually inspired by the others and they are building on, they are contributing ideas, interacting with others and actually refining the ideas. No one is shooting others' ideas down. This way you have collaboration. This way you have far better ideas. The next step, what we do is cluster these ideas. Many of the ideas tend to be similar, but by clustering, you can actually generate new thoughts and you can come up with new insights. You then use experts and develop hypothesis. Hypothesis is one of the most powerful way of actually progressing. Every innovation comes out of a hypothesis because somebody says, okay, this is going to make a sense to some customer to buy our product. It's going to make somebody's life simple. It's going to make somebody's life very efficient and so on. So you test those hypotheses. You design experiments to test those hypotheses. Great companies carry out enormous number of experiments. Those experiments generate enormous number of, enormous amount of knowledge. It creates insights for the organization to build on. And from these insights, you have advantage because there could be something that's big today. It could be something that is big tomorrow. And it could be something that is very, very big for the future. So you actually don't wor just work for today, but actually work for the future. You, uh, you generate ideas which go, which impact multiple horizons. Now you said that you're interested by the name Think Horizon. And this is the reason for that. Because you need to be thinking in different horizons. You can't just be thinking about today. You need to be working on your today. You need to be working on your tomorrow. And you need to be working on your future all at the same time. What the system does by doing, generating so much of experiments and knowledge is find ideas that will address your today's needs. It will address tomorrow's needs and it will address the future needs. So you actually have a portfolio of projects from this sort of an approach. We find this enormously successful for organization because what you do in a very short period by, cap by engaging people, not just from your organization, by engaging people from a wide, wide field, by engaging university, by engaging suppliers, by engaging your customers, Get ideas that you can, that will tell you what you need to be doing, not just today, but for the future as well. And so this is something that we have used very successfully with organizations. And I believe is very central to the way organizations need to do for the future. You have because, two minutes. Yep. So that's uh, that's the last slide actually. And uh, it's the important message here is that your today's requirements, what is important today might not be important for you, for your future. What is important for your future is probably not relevant for you today. However, you can't lose sight of that. You need to be planning for all of them. And an uh, open ideation system is something which will help you identify ideas that work across the horizon. This is what I had to share. It was a very specific area that I wanted to uh, uh, share with people. And so if there are questions, I'm happy to take them.